Every year we get lots of questions from farmers saying, well, I understand I'm supposed to use this particular herbicide, but what do you want me to use for spray adjuvants? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of different spray adjuvants out there, and there's quite a few different companies manufacturing adjuvants. There's different combinations of products, and you say, wow, there are just so many different ones out there. Let's try okay. to keep it simple and keep it Yeah, but the here's, here's the scary thing about these spray adjuvants. There are lots of companies that are registering spray adjuvants because, quite frankly, it's pretty easy and simple to get a label for a spray adjuvant compared to a pesticide. With the pesticide, they've got to spend tens of millions of dollars. They have to go through extensive labeling, run through the EPA, everything else. With these spray adjuvants, it's really nothing much. It's nothing that's going to be harmful to the environment or anything like that, so it can get labeled pretty easily. The problem is there can be a wide variety of product quality because it's not a real heavily regulated industry. Let's just get into some of these different adjuvants that we're using. Let's start kind of from the basics non-ionic surfactant. Now that sounds a little complicated. It sounds a little bit scientific. It's actually one of the easier ones to use. It can be used in many different tank mixes. All right, it's spreader sticker. Okay, so it's gonna hopefully help that herbicide or insecticide or fungicide spread out on the leaf a little more and stick to the leaf just a little bit better. All right, that sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? Because we don't wanna have the spray running onto the ground. That does us no good. It's gotta stay on the leaf. Well, if you can spread out that herbicide, specifically the herbicide, Sides. You're going to get a little bit better coverage on the leaves, perhaps a little bit better weed control, especially with certain products. That's why it really does make a big difference putting this adjuvant in with different herbicides and or spray. And the thing is, these herbicides, you say, well, why don't they just put it right in with the herbicide if they need it so bad? A lot of times you can't put that surfactant in with the herbicide because it may end up breaking down the herbicide over time. And the other thing is you don't always need it depending on what other things you're combining together. In other words, if you were to put two different herbicides sides together, maybe one of them has more than enough adjuvant in it, if you double up the adjuvant, that potentially could lead to a little bit more leaf burn. Or you could have some issues getting it sprayed out or something. So it leaves you a lot more flexibility yep. when you can add in your own adjuvant. Now, let's say that that basic spreader sticker isn't quite enough. You want something that's going to help with penetration into the leaf. That's going to be a little bit quicker kill, a little bit stronger adjuvant. Well, the main reason why you might need something a little bit stronger is if you have a thicker leaf cuticle. So especially when you're in hot and dry conditions, the leaf cuticle gets thicker, it's a waxy surface, you've got to break through that. So that's where you might need something like crop oil concentrate or methylated seed oil. Okay, now crop oil is one of those ones that, that there's a little bit of a, I don't know, it's kind of a tricky name. It says crop oil. To me, that sounds like, well, that's got to be made from a crop, but that's not it at all. It's petroleum-based oil products that can be sprayed safely on crops. Okay, how about methylated seed oil? What's that? Well, methylated seed oil is the one that typically has some kind of crop in it. So it's like a soybean oil or maybe a sunflower oil. Or canola oil. Those types of oils get used in methylated seed oil. Now, if it's more like that crop, it will get into that leaf just a little bit quicker. It'll be able to penetrate better. You'll probably see more burn from your herbicide. In a good way on the weeds, you may see a little bit more crop response with some of the harsher pesticides you use. But the thing is, with these seed oils, there can be an unmethylated seed oil, or they'll just usually call it veg oil, or a methylated seed oil. The methylated seed oil with that methylated part and that wording, they've basically taken out some of the harsher things to it so you won't get quite as quick a burn with that methylated seed oil. It's slightly safer to the crop. We usually prefer methylated seed oils as compared to the straight vegetable oils. Now, one of the things that's getting sprayed quite a bit this summer, where there are a lot of questions on do I need an adjuvant or not, is when something's getting mixed with Roundup. For example, volunteer corn control and Roundup, that's going to be an interesting one. You know, well, it's not that interesting. You just need non-ionic surfactant. The reason why is because in Roundup or any glyphosate, there's cationic surfactant, okay? It, that's the positively charged ion. The non-ionic surfactant, that's neutral, all right? So it's just a different type of surfactant. So glyphosate has the cationic surfactant, is not going to work for your volunteer corn killers. You've got to throw in a little bit of non-ionic surfactant, usually at one quart per 100 gallons of water. The other thing that does vary too, as we get into the summer and it gets a little bit drier, especially in the Western Corn Belt, it gets hot, it gets dry. There may be products that you normally don't add any kind of adjuvant with that all of a sudden you start needing to add that in to get a little better penetration. Yeah, and we could go through a lot of different scenarios, but the main thing I guess we wanted to stress to you today is just make sure that you're working with a good agronomist and getting good information because if you use the wrong adjuvant 
let's say you use a crop oil in a situation where you shouldn't, it might not kill the crop or anything, but you're probably going to damage the crop. You're going to see more leaf burn. You just have to use some common sense and again, get some good information. And it can change from the middle of May to the middle of June to the middle of July. It really varies depending on what your weather conditions have been for the last couple of weeks. Well, all those things come into play when we're talking about controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to get it done coming up next.